Yo, what's up? This is Jay Dennis, and we're back with another Ranked and Reviewed, and we are doing another band, which I believe in this series is just going to be like a power trio of bands that put out three solid albums in a you know short amount of time and haven't done anything since. But said three albums could be quite incredible. And if you saw last week's release, I believe it would be Metalocalypse, you know, Death Clock, you know, from Adult Swim. Uh, TV show slash animated band who put out three awesome albums. Well, this week we are going back to what was a good chunk of my high school career, coupled with, you know, like first year of college maybe, and looking at metalcore, I guess you would call them underground titans, it dies today. I love this band and three albums that they've put out, and I don't know of anybody in their right mind... <laughs> has ever ranked these albums, especially considering there's two different vocalists to consider. But uh, considering how much impact they had on me in high school, and again, a little bit afterwards, and to this day, how much I still love these three albums. So from 2004 all the way up until, I believe, did their latest album come out in 08 or 09? Uh, let's see, uh, 2009. Okay. Yeah, um, and I was going to talk about their Forever Scorn DP, but I, you know what, I'm actually not going to. So if you just rolled your eyes and said, what the fuck, bro, understand, um, I just simply can't, because we're doing albums. Anyway, so, Cative Choir, Sirens, Sirens, and Liquidity. Liquidity, what the fuck, Levidity! Should I just <laughs> should I just do another take? No, that's not how this channel works. We get it all out at once. We just blow our load and we enjoy ourselves and deal with the mess later. So in typical fashion, I'm going to rank and review these albums and then give you my top 10 It Dies Today songs at the very end. And like I said at the top, I thoroughly enjoy all three of these albums. So, But ranking them, though, was actually pretty easy. Uh, but the spread is between an 8.7, which is a high, great album, up until a 9.05. So we got really great to excellent between these three releases. So let's get into it. My least favorite It Dies Today album is their first one, The Caitiff Choir. Now this is, of course, you would call it maybe like their most raw release, but for 2004, very solid. Um, but a lot of um, metal by numbers, metalcore sounds here. But here's the thing about it dies today. They're not just a metalcore band. They've also injected a little bit of like what appears to be like emo, like, you know, that mid 2000s MySpace uh, emo stuff in there. Maybe some alternative things, not just with their appearance, but also some of like the lyrical themes and maybe some of the... Uh, the, uh, what do you call it, the execution of said clean choruses or melodies. But here's the thing about It Dies Today. They're heavy as fuck. And um, both vocalists, but, you know, we're talking about Nick right now, um, are fucking great. Heavy vocals and clean vocals are all excellent. I always thought that Nick was a great vocalist and a huge reason why I got into this genre. But with the K-Tiff Choir... It is more raw. It's still an 8.7 out of 10, which means it's a really great album. You know, songs like Severed Ties Yield Severed Heads, Naina, The Radiance, Marigold, Disintegration. Um, those are all really catchy, memorable songs, especially Severed Ties Yield Severed Heads. Like, I fucking love that song. I love that chorus. Um, but then you got some heavy-ass shit. You got the opening track, My Promise, which just opens with that, oh, just kind of like your... A standard drop C metalcore breakdown riff, but it was 2004. That's what was in vogue, man. And then you got some other heavy shit like Depravity Waltz or Freak Gasoline Fight, Kate of Choir Revelations. But it's complemented by catchy, memorable hooks and other tracks like the ones I just mentioned at the top. But you've got Threnati of Modern Romance, which is kind of like your standard catchy metalcore song, but it's got like, again, the hooks. Um, you know, for 2004, this was a very solid, potent album. I just think that this band might have been a little bit underground and not enough people appreciated them. But I could be wrong. They might have had a solid fan base. And if they released something new, I'm sure a lot of people would appreciate it. Um, 
But then, like, uh, the closing track, Cadef Choir uh, Defeatism, is an excellent closing track. It's an epic metalcore uh, masterpiece to close off the album. Um, a lot of great melodies, a lot of great strings and choir accompaniments, and then a very mellow closing part to kind of cap off the album. So Cadef Choir... 41 minutes of awesomeness, very well-rounded, kind of more raw sounding, meaning like the, the, the tones of the guitars or the, the development of his voice wasn't completely there yet, but it was a great showcase of what was to come. And if you like that more raw sound, you'd probably call this their best album. But let's move on to the number two spot, which is Lividity, their album that features Jason. I think his name's Jason. Different vocalist, but... Still very much in the spirit of the It Dies Today sound. I think with regards to music, though, this is their best album. The guitar work on this album is top-notch. The guitar solos are so fucking tight. And songs like uh, Miss October... Uh, fuck, which, which, what, what were the other songs? Um, was it uh, Life of Uncertainty that had a decent guitar solo? Um, but Martyr of Truth also has you know great guitar work, that intro, also. But the reason I like Lividity so much is not just because Jason sounds incredible on the vocals and he was a great, you know, I guess replacement, stand-in for Nick. Um, the Cadef Choir was in drop C. As soon as It Dies Today took it down a step and started playing in drop B, that's when, like, the real evil, heavy-sounding shit really came out. I know it can be hard to do that, but if you accompany drop B with the right amount of chugs and the right amount of heavy... Um, and triplets and quadruplets and shit like that, it can make for a much heavier tuning. Um, you know, the opening, you know, this ghost really does that, but then you have probably their heaviest song, Thank You for Drinking. Lay your head down. Like, just the fucking gutturals, the lows are on that, with just the chugs, uh, the breakdowns, like the chorus, like in the closing, uh, the closing breakdown. Like, Thank You for Drinking is definitely one of the best tracks on the album. Very memorable, completely heavy, definitely their heaviest track. You have iconic choruses and songs like Reckless Abandon, again, Miss October. The bridge, that guitar work and that guitar solo in Miss October is probably some of the guitarist's best work. Uh, Martyr of Truth, same deal. Um, the album kind of dips a little bit with Nihility. Their, my least favorite song from them is on this album, and that's Life of Uncertainty. I just think it's a weak chorus. But it's still a great song. Um, otherwise, uh, it picks up again with the heaviness with The Architects, another kind of heavy, thank you for drinking style song. But it closes on such a high note with songs like Complacence Without Pursuit. I fucking love that song. It actually inspired quite a lot of material I wrote back in the early 2010s with you know bands like Architects and stuff too. That's the best song on the album is Complacency Without Pursuit. Um, just the buildup, the, 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 the outro... Just the entire the entirety of the song is a masterpiece. And then the Duran Duran cover of Come Undone, um, it's not even a bonus track. It's just part of the album. That's why I included it. Um, all three of their albums have um, 11 tracks and all sit around 40 minutes. So they're pretty consistent with that. Come Undone is a catchy-ass chorus uh, cover song, and they did a great job, job with it. So Lividity is a little bit more than marginally better than Kate of Choir. It's solid, it's memorable, you know, it's not without its minor dips here and there, but it does come out swinging hard with the first four tracks, and then it closes powerfully with the last two. It sounds darker and heavier. Jason is an excellent vocalist. I wish they could have done more, um, but at least they gave us lividity. But that leads us to the final and best album. No question, it's always been Sirens. Sirens has always been their best album. That's, that's the album that got me into them. Uh, I, I, when I watched Headbangers Ball back in the mid-2000s, you know, seeing like Barrier Dead, Kill Switch Engage, you know, basically like in 2006, the music video that got me into this band was uh, Sacred Heart. Sacred Heart. Um, just that fucking drop beat. So loud. Like just, the, dude, the, this album sounds the best. It's got the most amount of hooks. The heavy is still there. Um, and again, this is probably one of my, I don't know, maybe top 30, top 40 albums of all time. I gave it a 9.05 out of 10, which doesn't mean it's flawless, but it is excellent. I don't give a lot of albums an excellent rating. So Sirens is definitely a huge like high school album for me. I listened to it a shit ton driving to and from work like my junior year of high school. 
Uh, I've listened to it a lot over the years, the past, you know, 10 to 12 years, I guess. Um, but it opens with their best song, A Constant Reminder. Powerful chorus, powerful verses, powerful outro. You know, the guitar riff isn't the most original sounding, but it is catchy. It does hook you. It does pull you in and give you the stage setting power that is the rest of the album. I don't know why A Port in Any Storm is the most played song on Spotify, but it is catchy. It is an excellent song. Um, the Channel Affair, um, very, very much some powerful lyrics there. Um, and a great final chorus. Drag marks in a trail of hearts will guide you home. Sorry. Um, and then, of course, Sacred Heart. But, like, here's the thing. The difference between Sirens and Lividity is Sirens also comes out the gate hitting hard, but it maintains that hardness, that erectness, if you will, um, <laughs> um, throughout and doesn't really dip. Uh, the weakest track on this album is Through Leaves and Over Bridges, which I actually had as a MySpace song back then. <laughs> but it picks back up again with On the Road to Damnation and Turn Loose the Doves. Um, but just the amount of excellent tracks on here, it trumps the other ones. God, fucking asshole, ruined that word. Um, but the breakdowns, uh, the vocal hooks, the back and forth between the excellent singing of Nick and the excellent heavy vocals and gutturals and high screams, mid screams of Nick and Reignite the Fires, Black Bile, White Lies. The other best track on the album, besides from Constant Reminder and Sacred Heart, is the title track, Sirens. That guitar work is excellent. That chorus is um, memorable. Um, and then, of course, you know, let's not forget about 6th of June. It's not my favorite song on the album, but it is excellent. It is a great heavy metal song that if you're not into harsh vocals, that is all clean vocals, I believe. So if you want to show somebody in a Dice Today song, but they're not like a super heavy metal person, show them 6th of June. It's a very accessible, catchy, memorable song. But with that, let's recap. This awesome band, least favorite to most favorite, but still three incredible albums, Arcade of Choir, Lividity, and Sirens. And my top 10 tracks are Reckless Abandoned, uh, Nainia, uh, Come Undone, Thank You for Drinking, Severed Tides, Yield Severed Heads, the Bichonal Affair, Complacency Without Pursuit, Sirens, Sacred Heart, and of course, A Constant Reminder. Um, I think four tracks were off of Sirens, uh, four, uh, four tracks were off Lividity, and two were off of Kate of Choir. So thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Be sure to check out the Ranked and Reviewed playlist for all the other ones, and definitely comment what you agree or disagree with. How would you change it? Are you an Dies Today fan? Are you happy that somebody finally fucking talked about this awesome band full of awesome musicians and great vocal work also? Uh, my apologies that I didn't give a um, nod to their Forever Scorn DP. That's not part of the ranking, but my guess from what I remember is it's awesome too. It's probably just a bit more of a raw version of um, Kate of Choir. So Forever Scorn does a solid EP also. It's just not part of this ranking. So... Thanks, enjoy, goodbye.